Hey guys, it's Alex coming at you from the garage. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna kind of show you what you can buy out there in terms of Coyote motors, pretty cheap. There are a lot of motors out there that have very, let's just say minor failures, but the price to fix that minor failure is basically pulling the whole motor out. And a lot of people don't wanna send a motor to a machine shop to fix something like a Ringland issue a ringland issue you could probably literally get away with replacing a piston but a lot of people are like I don't want to get into all that nonsense I'd rather just get another motor because it's easier I don't trust shops because you and I both know machine shops out there and motor builders are well let's just say they, they haven't really done well lately so I thought let me show people what's out there what you can pick up that had a minor minor uh, failure and you can get it for real cheap and I got a whole bunch of extra parts with the motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a Gen 2 motor that I bought that had a Ringland failure. I'm gonna see if all the other parts are okay. I don't think I'm gonna pull all the pistons. What I'm gonna try to do is pull the piston that's a problem. I know what you're thinking. Alex, you should check all the pistons now that you're there. But guys, you understand that becomes more involved, but you might be right. So we'll see. So um, I'm gonna show you a Gen 2 motor that I got for under 2,000 bucks. And you and I both know the cylinder heads alone are worth that. So this is a Gen 2 motor. I uh, got it from Jake, Power by the Hour. A customer came in, said, uh, has a ring land failure, so I want a new motor. And as you can tell, it has not been used long. You know, it's the block looks pretty fresh. It doesn't look like it had a lot of oil through it. It looks like it just was run on pump gas. So he supposedly had a ring land failure. So I'm like, okay, so... Not only did I pick up the short block, Jake gave me a whole bunch of extra parts that came with it and I'll show you what's in these crates. Okay, what's in crate number one? I think it's a cylinder head. Yep, so. Cylinder head, Gen 2. This is the rear main housing. And got cylinder heads, got a bunch of stuff there. Oil pump gears, you know what? I never checked this. Let me see if they upgraded the oil, uh, looks, I don't know, looks like someone might have schmutzed, schmutzed up the, uh, the bolts. See if I can see any identify marks on this guy. It'd be awesome if it was like TSS. Because, you know, MMR's fine, but I'm a TSS fan, man. They just make badass shit. I hear, I hear um, FFRE's going to get into this game, so. Oh, look at that. Son of a bitch. Ha, <laughs> Damn. Score TSS oil pump gears. Oh, I ain't, I ain't even taking it out of here. I'm leaving it on. All right, so I'll show you everything that's in there, but first, let me get that guy on there so I can flip it around, take a look at the bores, and see if I can identify which one, which one of the ring lands failed on this motor. So looking at the Coyote from the front, meaning the crank, this is uh, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, bank one, bank two, for those of you that want to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate starting on, eh, rotate starting on number one, see if there's, the cross hatches are still there. And if they are, I'll try to find which cylinder seems to be weird. I'm thinking it's this guy, just based on what I see right there, right? I'm thinking this guy maybe lost stability in the ringland area. And then it started to kind of score a little bit on the uh, cylinders, but I can't feel my nail anything super obvious so let me rotate it see what it looks like let's take a look at this guy get it all the way to the bottom okay really pretty nice cross hatch let me get the flashlight on this guy yeah no issues there let's move on to number two it's already all the way down a little wet let me uh clean that up still i mean super good 
Super good. Alright, let's go number three. Clean that guy up a little bit. Okay, so this is showing some, not scoring, but there's definitely not as a clean crosshatch um, on this cylinder. Let's keep going. Again, low buck coyotes, beautiful crosshatch, absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's go over the other side. Looking good on this guy, which is number five. Super good. Now number six. Yeah, come on, Alex. Yeah. Okay. Still good. A little bit of stuff there, but not terrible. A little bit up there, too. So this guy. You know, could be. But we'll keep going. I know you guys are saying, yeah, let's just do them all. It's <laughs> not the point of this. Not the point of this at all. Okay, this one this one looks like it's definitely not as pretty in terms of crosshatch. What happened there? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, you know what? This this is a no go right here. So I think I think this engine is probably going to end up being a no go, or at least this sleeve. And I'm not looking to sleeve anything, but yeah, if you look at this, how porous it is, you're like, okay, no good. So not a great short block candidate to mess with, but I did get good cylinder heads out of it. So it'll be good to learn a little bit about what cause, what a ring line failure looks like. So, or, you know, I can have it sleeved, but then you're like, how much are you want? Look at, look how pretty the other one is. Yeah, beautiful, right? So I did not get lucky because of this guy right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably pull that piston See what it looks like. I don't think I can get away with a hone. This will definitely be, be blow by. You know what I mean? That'll definitely be blow by. There'll be oil coming out of that cylinder, so it's gonna be a problem, so. But let's now concentrate on the cylinder heads that I got. These are Gen 2 Mustang heads with cam. So I got everything here, got the stock cam. I'm not gonna try to move this guy too much, but I'll flip it just to inspect, just to make sure valves visually look okay. But based on what I can tell, everything looks super clean. But let me flip it, make sure there's no missing chunks. I'll make sure I keep the orientation of these cams proper and uh, see what's going on underneath. So far, so good. He might have been running E85, not sure. Not much carbon at all. And as you can tell, these are Gen 2 heads, right? But look at this guy. Even back in 2015, actually even back in 2014, if you look at back at old 2014 castings, Ford had already started to make the casting for the direct injection, even, even back on Gen 2. But if you look back on Gen 1 cylinder heads, they also have this little dimple in the casting for the upcoming DI on Gen 3. So they had that in the works for a while. It just kind of tells you how far ahead they plan. All right, let's take a look at the other cylinder head. Shit, I literally got everything. I got water pump, thermostat housing, cam slash coil covers, slash valve cover. These are numbered, so don't stress it that they're all over the place, but they're numbered. The other valve cover, slash cam cover, slash coil cover. Oh no, coil cover's on the top, so this would be a valve cover slash cam cover. There's a second cylinder head, pull it out. Cams, look at the journals, look at if there's any scoring. No, it's just dusty. I already did this on the other one, but I didn't document it. But no scoring on the journals anywhere. For those of you wondering what the Hall effect sensors pick up, well, they pick up this, these little teeth right here. So this is what tells the computer what cam position you have. And it goes around and, and it hits on a little magnet. And that little magnet reports back to the computer what the hell's happening. These guys right here at the back of your cylinder head. Oh, at the back of your cylinder head, you have these guys. They're called Hall Effect Sensors. They have magnets on them. They, they go in here and they pick up the position 
and that's reporting to the computer the cam angle that you're moving everything at. We also have in the box the VCT, which I'm going to absolutely reuse. None of this stuff looks worn out at all. The guides look pretty good. I am, you know, not going to go too crazy. So if you're wondering, Alex, well, what are you going to do now that you know that that motor or short block has a bit of a score? Well, I have an illuminator right here that I brought from, I bought from Collier Gen 1 illuminator. So Gen 1 bottom end, Gen 2 heads, Gen 2 timing components. What? What? T.S. Bro, this is unobtainium. Absolute unobtainium TSS oil pump gear. Whoa. Guys, maybe for those of you that don't understand, this is the one to get. This is, the, this is that motherfucker. And to get a set of TSS oil pump gears and... A crank sprocket, sorry, I said oil pump gear. Crank sprocket, sorry. Crank sprocket. Uh, amazing. And I got a set of Gen 2 cylinder heads. So for the cost of the whole engine, <coughs> it was less than 2,000 bucks. So I got heads, oil pump gears, crank sprocket, and all the timing components. A bad sleeve on this guy, which I might be able to sell. Let's say I say to somebody, hey, I got a Gen 2 motor here, and... It needs a piston and a sleeve, which is a big deal for those of you that don't know the machine work. But if you know a guy that knows a guy, bro, how much do you think a rebuildable Gen 2 bottom end would go for in the used market? I'd sell this motherfucker for a thousand bucks. Go, thousand bucks, rebuildable. I'll keep everything else. What do you guys think? Crazy money? Who knows? We'll see. But anyway, it's you in case you want it. Uh, but yeah, let me look at the other cylinder head. A lot of you guys already know this, but for those that don't know, these are followers. So these guys are basically the lifter, okay? This is basically your lifter, okay? So this guy is what pushes down on the valve, and the cam pushes down on this guy, and it, you know, goes back and forth and oscillates and does the whole cam thing. So this is basically your follower slash lifter. Hydraulic, hydraulic situation there. Now, we're starting to see the limitations of this part right here on race applications. The Grey Goose has these. Guys, the Grey Goose, a six-second, 2,500-horsepower car, has this, a Ford OEM part. That's why when a lot of you guys poo-poo the Coyote performance, I go, you don't understand. The valve train is mostly stock on really fast stuff. Now, they do make a set of these that are on the solid side, but then what will happen is you're probably going to get some... On the really high horsepower application, some issues with the spring, so you have to like, you know, it's gonna be some pretty wonky stuff that they're gonna have to do to keep the valve train happy at 10,000 RPMs and solid roller. But the fact that these have gone six, well into the sixes on stock stuff, that's what we say, Coyote's king. You don't have to do shit, mostly just maybe good springs, good valves if you're gonna go make big power and all the stock drivetrain stuff in this car will make 2,000 horsepower to the rear wheel with mostly stock stuff. Okay, and again, no major issues, nothing obvious. Now, if I'm gonna do the short block, meaning the illuminator short block with these heads and the Gen, 1, Gen 2 timing components, I mean, should I send these off to head games? Have them ported, put Ferrera valves, but you gotta understand, you know, head porting job is, is good money, so I'll talk to Dave and see if something can be done, but honestly, uh, for what my power goals this stock stuff will work but if you already have it out why not give it some kind of update or upgrade better springs better valves and all that we'll see we'll talk to Dave we'll see what comes of it again visually looks great now, because I don't have the time to assemble stuff all the time I'd love to get with someone that can assemble this stuff but I'm looking to do this on the cheap you understand so I might be doing the assembly on this because I have the time now uh, at nighttime because it's literally 10 o'clock at night right now I'm, I'm making this video and it'll give me a chance to learn a little bit about, you know, the assembly process so that in the event a customer or something says, hey, I have this issue or whatever. I'm like, shit, you know, I came across that when I was putting it together. Maybe he forgot this. Maybe he forgot that. So it's something that you can definitely um, benefit from by putting something together so that if the customer experiences an issue that you came across, you can kind of guide them in that direction. Okay, that'll do it. Just letting you know there's hidden gems out there, little hidden gems, and this motor was under 2,000 bucks, 
I got a good set of cylinder heads, cams, complete drivetrain, cam covers, TSS oil pump gears, and crank sprocket, and a whole bunch of other goodies, you know, and ancillary stuff. But the short block, that cylinder looks like it's not happy, so I'm definitely not gonna try to fix it myself. If somebody wants to buy it for a thousand bucks, cool. If not, it can stay here until I find someone that I trust to maybe sleeve it back to the stock bore, reuse the stock pistons, new ring set, and then go from there. Probably not a bad idea. All right, there you go. Be on the lookout for deals out there. Just because a motor has a bad ring land or a bad cylinder does not mean it's not worth the buy if you can get all the other goodies at a very discounted price. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.